Hello everyone, I'm Hugo, I'm co-founder of Blazity and today I'm going to talk to you about hydration. Now what is hydration, how to use it, why to use it, uh, we'll talk about it right away. Just before we do, um, I would like you to comment, subscribe and like our video so you can stay up to date and perhaps keep learning. So the concept of hydration is something that comes into play whenever we talk about server-side rendering. Now server-side rendering might be just what it sounds like, server-side rendering. It might also refer to um, static-side rendering, because that's when uh, server-side rendering also happens, but it happens uh, during build time. It doesn't really have, doesn't happen on the edge or doesn't really require runtime. Um, now, hydration is the process of hydrating your web page with JavaScript. Now, why would you want to do this? Um, typically, whenever we talk about server-side rendering, server-side rendering makes it so that we can take the JavaScript required to build a page and sort of build this page beforehand and serve this page directly to the user. Now, what it means is that instead of just serving the user JavaScript and making user's browser interpret that JavaScript, run it and make it build the website in their browser. We actually do it on the server. And since we're doing this on the server, we can send the user the rendered HTML document with styles and JavaScript separately. So they don't, they don't really have to take care of all that JavaScript by themselves before they see anything. They can see the, the let's call it snapshot of the website. And then they can receive JavaScript that makes that snapshot come to life, becomes interactive. Now, hydration is just that process. It's taking the snapshot of the website, so everything that you're supposed to see, and then adding that layer of interactivity to it. So hydrating it with interactivity with JavaScript. Now, when it comes to hydration strategies, they're pretty challenging because it's a lot of times hard to tell exactly what has to be hydrated first and what user wants to interact with first. And those are pretty important questions to answer because whenever you're doing server-side rendering, your first meaningful paint will probably be super fast because you're actually sending a complete ready-to-show document, the HTML document with styles. Um, however, your time to interactive might not be as great because Again, before the hydration happens and while the hydration is happening, the user is sort of stuck with a snapshot of a website that seems to be interactive, but really isn't. Which is why something called progressive hydration is really important because instead of making the user wait for the entirety of the whole page they're viewing interactive, we would ideally want to make it interactive progressively. Meaning that as a user, when I'm viewing a website, a web page, a web app, when I see elements on that web page, web app that I want to interact with, ideally I would want to hydrate those first. I don't want to hydrate anything that's five viewports below of what I'm viewing. I don't want to hi have hydrated um, things on another web page or on another sub page. I want to have hydrated what I'm currently viewing. Progressive hydration is very important to do whenever you're doing server-side rendering. Um, and it's also pretty difficult to do well. Now, with Next.js, that's not really a thing, um, the hard part, because Next.js allows us to pretty much do all the things right out of the box. So instead of doing your own server-side rendering setup, uh, setting up your runtime, uh, or maybe your edge environment, then uh, deciding how you should actually go about hydrating specific parts of the web page. Uh, while well, you can most of the time overwrite those, Next.js makes really good guesses and actually looks at how you're sending your web page over to the user, about which elements are supposed to be interactable and are shown to the user in the first place and makes all those decisions for you. Uh, with the result being a pretty automatically looking process that 
results in a web app or a website being very responsive with that gap that we mentioned before with first meaningful paint and time to interactive that gap becomes super small and sometimes it's even uh, unnoticeable. As always, thank you for watching and consider liking, subscribing and commenting if you have any questions for us and if you want to stay up to date with all the tech news, tips, everything that we have to say.